بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا أن اعبدوا الله واجتنبوا الطاغوت And to every nation we send a messenger commanding them to worship Allah Azza wa alone and to stay away from the false deities. And the Shaykh he goes on to talk about how this was the da'wah of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Salih, Shu'ayb and all of the other anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam. He said, وَهَذَا مَا فَعَلَهُ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَمَّا بَعَثَ مُعَاذًا إِلَى الْيَمَنِ And this is exactly the same that was done by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when the Prophet he sent Mu'ad to Yemen. As we find in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma when he said, لما بعث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم Mu'ad ibn Jabal ila, ila nahu al-Yaman he said when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he sent Mu'ad to the people of Yemen قال له, he said to him, إنك تقدم على قوم من أهل الكتاب You are going to a people from the people of the book. So let the first thing that you call them to, that you invite them to, إلى أن يوحد الله to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to a tawheed. Then the shaykh he goes on to say, and I'm summarizing, إخوان, obviously because of the time. The shaykh he said, وهذا هو ما خلق الله تعالى الجن والإنس له. قال تعالى, and this was the very reason to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone without ascribing any partners is the very reason that Allah Azza wa Jal created the jinn and mankind. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn or mankind except to worship me alone. So naam, any type of rectification, it has to be based upon a tawheed. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners. That is something that can never be compromised. That is something that will never change. This is the religion of all of the Anbiya. All of the prophets and messengers. This is something we can't agree to remain silent concerning. Meaning calling to a tawheed and warning against a shirk. We can never compromise that. Because that is the foundation of this religion. If we compromise that and we say we'll remain silent about shirk, we're compromising the deen. So there is no rectification. And when we say there is no rectification, there is no rectification of the individual themselves. Meaning as an individual, you. There is no rectification for you as an individual. Whether you refer to his islah and nafs or anything else. Your household and the whole of society. There is no rectification. Nihaiyan. Why? Because Allah Azza wa tells us, Man amila salihan min dhakarin, Whoever does righteous deeds. Whether it be a male or a female. Min dhakarin aw untha. Wa huwa mu'min. And they are a believer. That's the important point. And they are a believer. They are a believer, meaning upon a tawheed. What does Allah Azza wa Jalla promise? فَلَنُحِيَنُّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Then we will give him a happy life. We will give them a happy life. So rectification, as an individual, it's impossible without tawheed. Rectification for a household is impossible without tawheed. Rectification for the whole of society is impossible without tawheed. To the extent that even happiness, it's impossible without a tawheed. Even if you look, ikhwan, and you go away and you study those adhkar, those supplications that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us to remove anxiety and depression and stress, the foundation of all of them is a tawheed. The supplication, for example, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Tawheed. La ilaha illa anta. لا إله إلا الله العزيز الحكيم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش الكريم لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم توحيد توحيد and that removes what that removes anxiety depression stress unhappiness and everything else توحيد so there is no rectification whatsoever without what without توحيد is that clear إخوان that's واضح so now, when you see people inviting these individuals, then you know something is wrong, regardless of what titles they have, regardless of where they studied, regardless of what qualifications they have. If you have an individual saying, Naam, I agree that we're going to remain silent about one another, and you have from those indivi- individuals who are grave worshippers, you know that that individual is upon dalala. Regardless of what qualification he has. So whoever invites this individual and defends him and promotes him, you know something's wrong. Naam. The Shaykh he mentioned Al-Thani, the second. Al-Islahu yabda'u min al-fardi, la min al-mujtama'. 
ولا من الحاكم ولا من غيره إنما كل إنسان يبدأ بنفسه فيصلحها وأدناه فأدناه The next thing that the Shaykh mentioned the second principle of al-islah this rectification rectification it starts with the individual this is important rectification it starts with the individual it does not start with the community many people like to complain about the community or the imam or these brothers they're not doing this they're not doing that how many of us take time to analyze our own self we're quick to criticize what takes place for example in the community or those who are trying to run the community in light of the book and the sunnah with understanding of the salaf but we're quick to just sit down and talk without يعني, offering sincere advice many of the times but look what the shaykh mentioned al-islahu yabda'u min al-fard rectification starts with the individual rectification it starts with the individual not with the society because you have some of the jama'at and some of the ahzab they say we want the hukum of Allah the rule of Allah azawajal but when you look at them in their own lives and you analyze, are they establishing the hukum of Allah in their own lives and in the lives of their families? As it relates to the way that their families dress, as it relates to, the, for example, what takes place in their houses, are they establishing the rule of Allah there? The Shaykh he said, Habibullah Ta'ala, rectification starts with the individual and it does not start with the community nor the leader other than him. In reality, each person should start with himself. And then those who are closest to them, and then those who are closest to them. He said, Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the state of a people until they change the state of themselves. How does a person change the state of يعني, his own self? As we mentioned, يعني, in light of the kitab and the sunnah with the understanding of the salaf, and the basis of that is a tawheed. Of course the basis of that is a tawheed because we know man haqqaqa at-tawheed dakhala al-jannata bi ghayri hisab whoever perfects tawheed will enter paradise without any reckoning so no doubt man haqqaqa at-tawheed whoever perfects tawheed he will enter jannah paradise without any reckoning and any account so that individual no doubt aslaha nafsahu he's rectified his own self so it connects even to the first point na'am then the Shaykh said, فَالْبَدْءُ بِالنَّفْسِ ثُمَّ الْأَقْرَبْ فَالْأَقْرَبْ So the starting point is with oneself, and then those who are closest, then those who are closest. And the Shaykh mentioned the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَأَنْذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ And warn your tribe of near kindred. Warn them, those who are close to you. And then he mentioned the hadith of, hadith of Abi Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaqu, give charity. And the Shaykh alhamdulillah, he brings, a, yani he derives this benefit in a nice fashion from this hadith, that a person should start with themselves, and inshallah I'll explain it bin Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaqu, give charity. And again, Ikhwan ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that charity is one of those things that when a person gives charity, Allah azza wa jal, removes from that individual all types of masaib, calamities, and all types of shurur. He said, even min al-zalim, or even min al-kafir, even from the one who is an oppressor, and even from the non-Muslim, because of sadaqah. That's just the benefit of relating to charity. So a person should never be stingy. If, for example, we have the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, about the man, we have the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, wa it's in al-Bukhari, and other than al-Bukhari, the man, when he was thirsty, and for example, he was on his journey, and he found the well, and he saw the dug. It was panting, because it was thirsty, and it was eating the earth. And the man, he climbed back into the well, and he put water in his hoof, and he put the hoof in his mouth, in the, in, he put the sock in his mouth, he climbed out the well, he gave the water to the dog to drink. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, فَشَكَرُ اللَّهُ لَهُ Allah Azawajal rewarded him for that. And Allah Azza wa Jal pardoned him, and Allah Azza wa Jal adhalahu jannah, and Allah entered in him into paradise just for giving a, a dog water to drink. Ibn Uthaymin he said, "Fakayfa bil adami." What about a human being if that's a dog? Charity, ikhwan. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Tasaddaqu, give charity." Look how the man he, yani, treated a dog, 
And alhamdulillah, look at the reward for treating in a dog. How many of us have that concern for our brother or our sister? How many of us support? Never mind supporting a dog. How many of us are willing to support yani, the da'wah or support the masajid or support our brothers or our sisters if there is a need? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaqu, give charity. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلَ مَنِ He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, عندي دينار, I have a dinar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaq bihi ala nafsik. Spend it upon yourself. Showing what? That you start with yourself. The Shaykh is using this hadith to show, Al-Islah yabda'u ma'adha min al-fard. From yourself. Spend it upon yourself. Start with yourself first. Then the man, he said, Qali indi akhar. He said, I have another dinar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaq bihi ala zawjatik. Spend it upon your wife. Qali indi akhar. The man, he said, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I have another dinar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaq bihi ala waladik. Spend it upon your child. Spend it, give it as charity to your child. Qala indi akhar. He said, I have another, yani, dinar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Tasaddaq bihi ala khadimik. Give it to your servant. The man, he said, I have another. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, anta absar. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he said, you know best what to do with it. Showing us, yani, how rectification occurs. And the Shaykh, he said, and this hadith, ikhwan, yani, Hassan wa al-Albani, rahimahullah, al-Albani declared it to be Hassan. The Shaykh, he said, فَإِذَا كَانَ فِي إِذَا كَانَ هَذَا فِي بَابِ الصَّدَقَةَ فَمَا بَالُكَ فِي أَمْرِ الْإِسْلَاحِ He said, if this is relating to charity, then what do you think about rectification? بِلَا شَكْ هُوَ أَوْلَى No doubt it is more يعني, important that you start with yourself, and so on and so forth. نَعْم and then the Shaykh, he mentions a beneficial point, inshallah, and I'll read it. He said, فَطَرِيقَ الْإِسْلَاحِ يَبْدَأُ بِالْفَرْضِ Rectification it starts with the individual. And when the individual rectifies himself, then that means what? He will try and rectify his family. Salah al-Usra. Likewise, when the family, يعني, when, he recti- when the family is rectified and in a good state, it will lead to the rectification of that community. When the community is rectified, it will lead to the rectification of that land. And then that country, and then the whole of society. That's important. The Shaykh, he said, Ikhwan, the third يعني, principle of al-Islah, or the first يعني, measure of, of al-Islah rectification, al-ilmu qabl al-qawli wal-amal. Knowledge, it comes before madha, it comes before speech and action. And all, all he does here, he mentions the, يعني, the chapter that al-Bukhari he mentions in Kitab al-Ilm. He says, وَقَدْ بَوَّبَ الْبُخَارِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ فِي صَحِيحِ Al-Bukhari mentions a chapter in the book of knowledge in al-Sahih. في كتاب العلم باب العلم قبل القول والعمل knowledge precedes speech and action لقول الله تعالى due to the saying of Allah the most high فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله know that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah سبحانه وتعالى I have a question just a pause how is this a دليل that knowledge comes before speech and action عندك نعم نعم متأكد you've heard it many times maybe you've memorized it how is this a دليل that knowledge comes before speech and action yeah, Kaif. How is it a delil? How is this derived from the ayah? <laughs> Naam. <laughs> Ahsant. Naam. Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. Know that none has the right to be uh, worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then seek, and then seek forgiveness for your sins. And ikhwan, alhamdulillah, just يعني, a side benefit, we see the scholars of al-Islam, this, يعني, i'lam rahimakullah, the ulama they mention, i'lam rahimakullah, i'lam, when this is used, it highlights that something very important is going to come after it, i'lam rahimakullah, some people they think that Shaykh al-Islam, he just mentioned that word haphazardly, and it was just by chance, and he never, يعني, derived it from anywhere, when he said, i'lam rahimakullah, where is it derived from? The book and the sunnah here. فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَشْرَفُ شيء, The most important thing is what? لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَعْظَمُ شَيْءٍ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ So فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. فَعَلَمْ It shows and it signifies that something important is going to be mentioned. نعم فَبَدَأْ بِالْعِلْمِ قَبْلِ الْقَوْلِ وَالْعَمَلِ That's the words of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. And the words of Al-Bukhari is, فَبَدَى بِالْعِلْمِ He started with knowledge. Who started with knowledge? Who started with knowledge? فَبَدَى بِالْعِلْمِ الدَّمِيرِ يعني المستتر يعود إلى من? 
الله الله عز وجل بدا بالعلم فاعلم انه لا اله الا الله الدمير المستتر يعود الى الله عز وجل نعم وان العلماء هم ورثه الانبياء وورث العلم من اخذه اخذ بحظ وافر and then he goes on to mention the shaykh he goes on to quote يعني that chapter from sahih al-bukhari showing the importance of what the importance of knowledge as we mentioned at the beginning al jahilu yufsidu akthar mimma yuslih the ignorant person he causes more harm and damage than he will achieve good because he's ignorant he doesn't know about how to achieve yani kayfa yuslih and that's like everything else da'wah is ibadah al da'wah is ibadah is worship naam and ibadah worship it has to fulfill two conditions the first al ikhlas the second it has to follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam al mutaba'a so it needs knowledge for da'wah you need knowledge al ilm qabl al qawli wal amal knowledge comes before speech and action and that is why many people it's not enough to say i intend good we intend good kam min murid al khair how many people that intend good they never achieve it because they don't know how to achieve it so it's not just a wanting and desiring good but it's also knowing how to attain it now that was the second thing that the sheikh he mentioned and he mentioned here at the end ikhwan he said wala yusta'mal fi ma yas'a ilay min al islah tariq al muwahharat li annahu laysa min sunnati al rasul wala min sunnati al salaf al salih wa hakadha la yaqul wala ya'mal illa bi 'ilm fal 'ilm qabl al qawli wal 'amal the sheikh said a person should not utilize or use any measures to bring about rectification and he should not utilize demonstrations or the like because demonstrations are not from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they are not from the way of the rightly guided predecessors that's why groups like muhajirun we know that they're not salafis even if that now they call themselves salafis after calling themselves everything else we know they're not why because they believe in demonstrations those individuals in egypt we know that they're not salafis because they believe of mudaharat and for example the parliament that is from the ways of rectification in opposition to the da'wah of ahli sunnah the sheikh he mentioned so that was the third as if the third measure that he mentioned and the fourth he said an yakuna ilmuhu ala manhaj as-salaf as-salih that an individual's knowledge it is based upon the understanding of the rightly guided predecessors it is based upon the understanding of the rightly guided predecessors na'am He said al-dhabit al-khamis and before I go to that and he mentioned the ikhwan under every um, chapter many adilla He said hadhihi hi al-dhabit al-islah These are some of the guidelines or some of the principles or measures for rectification allati idha khalafaha man idda'a al-islah inna ma kana min al-mufsidin and this is an important point He said these are the principles of rectification that a da'wah of rectification is built upon Whoever claims that they want to achieve rectification of the society and they do not fulfill these principles, they do not meet these principles, they do not implement these principles, then they are from those individuals that are spreading corruption upon the earth. That's important. Because we know many people, yani come, yani how many people do we find yaddai annahu min al-muslihin that they are bringing about rectification. You even have Hizb al-Islah. You have a group known as Hizb al-Islah. the group that is bringing about rectification so the sheikh he said here these are the guidelines these are the principles these are the this is the basis the brother he said that there's uh, somebody driving a honda 04 another car is hit it no It's a green Honda. Yeah, green Honda. Now, if any of the brothers or all the, yani yeah, all the sisters uh, drive a green Honda 04, then uh, the brothers are saying that a car has hit it. There's been an accident. No, there hasn't been an accident. Oh, just here, scrapped here. A scrape there. Okay, thank you. Ahsan Allahu ilaykum. Jazakum Allah khairan. Naam, ikhwan. So the Sheikh he said, "Hadi hi hi al-dawabit al-islah." These are 
the principles for rectification. التي إذا خالفها من ادعى الإصلاح إنما كان من المفسدين. Whoever opposes these principles, then even though they may claim to be bringing about rectification, they are from those individuals that what they are spreading corruption. That's why, Ikhwan, it's important that we do not become يعني, tired or we do not lose heart. Because, like I said, for my short time around, for example, uh, brothers in various places, you see brothers and sisters, they're becoming tired. And when I say tired, I don't mean tired, lethargic, that they're staying in their bed, sleeping. I mean, for example, as it relates to these principles, those sort of Salafiyya, those sort of Ahlul Sunnah, they're willing to compromise concerning them. Because it's becoming difficult for them. Wallahi, I want to remind myself and everyone else, إِنَّمَا amal bil khawatim. The saying of the Prophet ﷺ, yani, deeds are judged the way that they end. It's not over until we die. It's not over until we die. The difficulty is not over until we die. If for example we say, يعني, حقاً, we want to follow the path of the Prophet ﷺ. Do you think that's going to be an easy path? Do you expect when you, go, when you go out that people are going to throw roses in your wake? Here you are, here's red roses. Do you expect that? Is that what you expect? When the Prophet وسلم, he told us that the people that are tried and tested the most are those who imitate the Prophet وسلم, the most and then those who are most like them then those are the Prophets and then those who imitate them the most and then those who imitate them the most. أشد الناس بران الأنبياء The people that are tested the most of the prophets Then those who imitate them the most Then those who imitate them the most So if a person imitates the prophet He's going to be tested based upon يعني, He's going to be tested In accordance to his ability Because what? لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not overburden us so more than it can be So any type of test you meet Or we meet in our life Is something that we should be able to handle And Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in the Quran سبحانه وتعالى لا تبلغون في أموالكم وأنفسكم. You're going to be tested as it relates to your wealth, as it relates to your own selves. ولا تسمعون من الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم ومن الذين أشركوا أذى كثيرا. He said you're going to hear things that are harmful, that you dislike from those people who have given the book before you and the مشركون. But what? If you are what? من يكمل لا لا الآية ها وإن تصبروا وتتقوا فإن ذلك من عزم الأمور if you are patient and you fear Allah إخوان let's just all of us for our benefit open the mushaf go through the mushaf and read how many آيات الله عز وجل mentions وإن تصبروا وتتقوا if you are patient and you fear Allah. If you are patient and you fear Allah. If you are patient and you fear Allah. Patient until when? Patient until we leave this earth. In the mal'amal bil khawatim. Not patient, I've been patient for 10 years. Or 20 years, I haven't achieved anything. 30 years, I haven't achieved anything. Akhi, it's not over until we die. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul mut. Every soul will taste death. Wa inna ma tuwafawna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamah. But you will be rewarded on the day of judgment. Had a dalil. That it doesn't finish until we die. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ دَائِقَةِ الْمَوْتِ Keep acting until we die. Keep upon the kitab and the sunnah with the understanding of the salaf until we die. People, they come to us now, they say, امتحان ليس من السنه امتحان بدعة. They say that if you test people now with the imam of sunnah, with the imams of the sunnah, they say this is a bid'ah. أخي كيف بدعة. Open how many books of the salaf and you see the salaf making imtihan with al-imam Ahmad. The salaf making imtihan with al-awza'i. The salaf making imtihan with the imam salaf how many books of the Salaf? And they say, Imtihan is bid'ah. The Salaf, they used to say, Kunna namtahin bil awza'i. We used to test the people with awza'i. Faman dhakarhu bi khilfu wa sahi sunnah. Whoever mentioned him with good is a person of the sunnah. Naam, Imtihan, if there's a haj, if there's a need. Somebody you don't know. Now, for example, Alhamdulillah, the brother is with you, Alhamdulillah, Salafi. You've known him for years and you say, you start testing him. La. Somebody, for example, you don't know if there's a haj or a need. Naam. It's with the way of the Salaf. But you have people, they say, Imtihan is a bid'a يا أخي أين هؤلاء من كتب السلف؟ أين أين هؤلاء من آيات القرآن وأحاديث الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ النبي امتحن. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tested the slave girl. أين الله؟ في السماء. من أنا؟ You're the messenger of Allah. أعتقد أنها مؤمنة. امتحان. 
Al-Zahbi rahimahullah, Allah, he said whoever, yani, whoever says that you cannot ask a person, ain't Allah, then he's rejected that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the slave girl. Ikhwan, it's not over until mada, until we die. We should not compromise on any of the usul of the religion. We should be patient and fear Allah until we die. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَثَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ What success? Is success being in Yale? Or Harvard? Or Cambridge? Or Oxford? Is success having being a millionaire? Is success having, for example, everyone, oh, mashallah, being on, for example, a satellite channel? Is that success? No, that's not success. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us what success is. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعِ الْغُرُورِ Whoever is distanced from the hellfire and enters Jannah, then that is ultimate success. That's success. So it's not over until we what? Until we die. That's why we cannot compromise these usul. We cannot compromise these foundations of Ahl Sunnah. Because this is the deen of Allah. And this is the religion, the only religion that will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Ikhwan, the Shaykh, he mentioned Adbabit al-Khamis. The fifth thing, he said, أَنْ يَتَحَلَّ فِي دَعْوَةِ بِصِفَاتٍ That the da'i, the caller, he should possess qualities. بَيَّنَتْهَا الْآيَاتُ الْقُرْآنِيَ Which have been clarified in the verses of the Qur'an. وَلَا حَدِيثَ النَّبُوِيَ And the prophetic ahadith. وَلَا ثَارَ السَّلَفِيَّ And he goes on to mention some of those qualities. The shaykh, he goes on to mention, for example, knowledge. يعني, and likewise, gentleness في أثناء دعوته. And he mentions likewise, Barakallahu feekum, forbearance and patience and the like. Inshallah, I'll stop there um, for the brother Amjad, inshallah ta'ala. But just to close, this is important. Yani, this subject and this matter is important. Alhamdulillah, yani, the usul of Ahli Sunnah is clear and it is manifest. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, Taraktukum ala al-bayda. I left you upon clear guidance. Alhamdulillah, the usul of Salafiyya are wadiha. Alhamdulillah. The foundations of Salafiyya are clear. If, for example, and this is, I mentioned this to the brothers in America. If somebody says to us, for example, Jama'at al-Tabliq, I believe that Jama'at al-Tabliq is correct. Then all we have to say, is easy. Let us compare the da'wah of Jama'at al-Tabliq to the book and the sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf. To the usul of Ahl sunnah And we'll find how many usul that they oppose. Let us compare the da'wah of Al-Ikhwan al-Muslimun to the da'wah of what? The Da'wah of Ahlul Sunnah, the Usul of Ahlul Sunnah, the Book and the Sunnah in light of the understanding of the Salaf. Let's compare the Da'wah of this Jam'iyyah and that Jam'iyyah, Turath wa Ghayr Turath. Let's compare all of these Da'wahs in light of the Kitab and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. Bidun Ta'asr, without any allegiance or bigotry or blind following. Rather al-Haq. And you will see clearly that these Jama'at and these Ahzab, as the scholars have mentioned, they oppose many of the usul of Ahl Sunnah. And that's why the one who says that our differing with al ikhwan or with the tabligh or with any of these individuals or groups, yani or parties, is only about, is not about aqidah, then he's ignorant about the meaning of aqidah. No doubt it's aqidah. It's relating to usul. Naam. And inshallah ta'ala, I'll stop there. Wa jazakum Allah khairan wa barakallahu feekum. And the book I was reading from um, is al Manhaj al Salafi, the Salafi methodology, ta'rifu, its definition. And its characteristics were da'watu al-islahiyya and its call to rectification by al-Sheikh Muhammad ibn Umar ibn Salim Bazmul Habidullah ta'ala. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد 
fa inna ahsanal kalami kalamullah wa khairal huda huda Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa inna sharral umuri muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalalah wa kullu dalalatin fin nar then in continuation of what our brother Hassan Somali hafizullah ta'ala spoke of in terms of the only way of rectification is the path of salafiyah and I want to conclude inshallah this session by just reading a couple of statements of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah and likewise a piece of advice from Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhili hafizullah ta'ala and this topic revolves around the issue of having Al-thabat, having firmness, being steadfast, having istiqamah upon the Salafi manhaj. Yusuf bin Asbat, rahimahullah, one of the imams from the second century hijra, he said, Kana abi qadariyan, wa kana akhwali rawafid, fa'anqadhani Allahu bi sufyan. He said that my father used to be a qadari, someone who denied al-qadr. And my uncles used to be rawafid, rafida. And so Allah saved me by way of Sufyan. Meaning Sufyan al thawri And likewise a similar statement from the Tabi'i Abu Al-Aliya, rahimahullah. He said, I do not know which of the two favors of Allah are greater. That Allah guided me to Islam or that he did not make me a haruri. Meaning make me from the khawarij. These two statements from these two imams from the Salaf, they indicate, first of all, that it is indeed a great and mighty favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon an individual, upon a youth, upon a man, that he guides him to the path of Salafiyya, to the path of the Sunnah. This is indeed a great and mighty favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these imams, they recognized they recognized that because even in that time there began to appear oceans and waves of misguidance. The Khawarij, the Rafida, the Murji'a, the Qadariya, the Jahmiya, and other than them. So when these Imams they realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them with Islam and then the Sunnah and then Salafiya, they truly acknowledged and were grateful for this great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why we can sit here in the 21st century and we can be upon what those Imams were upon. Thanks to first and foremost Allah guiding them to the truth. And secondly, them having sabat upon that haq. They had sabat upon that haq, they had istiqamah. As a result of which, we can sit here in the 21st century by the Grace and favor of Allah first and foremost. And then due to the sabr and thabat and istiqamah of those imams in that time. And indeed of every alim from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in every age, in every century up, on, up until we reach our time today. So for that reason, once we acknowledge this favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has guided us to salafiyya, he has made us to recognize the Imams of our time, the likes of Sheikh Ibn Baz, Rahimahullah, Sheikh Albani, Rahimahullah, Sheikh Ibn Thaymin, Rahimahullah, Sheikh Muqbil, and those who are alive amongst them, Sheikh Rabi', Sheikh Al Fawzan, and many others. Once we acknowledge this favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did not make us to be from the Ikhwan, did not make us to be from the Tabligh, did not make us to be from the Tahrir, Tahririyun, and other than them, from the oceans and oceans of misguidance, then no doubt having Thabat having firmness upon this way, is part of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this favor. So the definition of thabat is al-istiqamatu ala al-huda amam da'yi al-hawa wa shahwa Al-thabat, being, fir- being firm, is to have istiqamah, to remain steadfast upon guidance in the face of being invited by desires, in the face of all of the desires, the lusts and the desires. And the hawa and the shahwa. The hawa is that which entices you to innovation. And the shahwa is that which entices you to sin 
and disobedience. So to have sabr in ilm and amal in the face of these two things, al-hawa wa shahwa. And no doubt al-sabat is pretty much synonymous with as-sabr. It is as-sabr, having patience upon the truth. And as for al-manhaj, this manhaj that we speak of, it is mentioned in the ayah, in Surah, in surah uh, Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَسِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي So Allah ordered the messenger say, say this is my path. I call, I invite to Allah عَلَى بَسِيرَةٍ Upon sure insight, upon knowledge, upon insight. I and whoever followed me. وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ and purified and glorified be Allah, and I am not from those from the mushrikeen. So he, the messenger of Allah, made it a requirement of his followers that they call to Allah, that their path, their sabil, their way, is to call to Allah upon basira, upon insight, upon knowledge. And for that reason, you see those groups that our brother mentioned from the ikhwan and the tabligh. Ihiyat Turas, Hizbut Tahrir, all of these groups are upon Dalala, they're upon misguidance, they do not call to Allah upon Basira, because they make fundamental mistakes in, in important issues of Aqeedah, as a result of which their whole methodologies, their programs, their paths, their ways are erroneous and misguided. To give you an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Qur'an many, many principles, many rules by which He governs His creation. And from those rules by which He governs His creation is that when a people worship Allah upon Tawheed, and when they are grateful to Him and obey Him and obey His messengers, then He will give them al-rizq and al-aman. Al-aman means safety and security. And ar rizq means sustenance. And when they move away from this, and when they worship other than Allah, and they disobey Allah, and they commit sins, then Allah removes that ni'mah, and it turns from being al-aman and rizq, to al-khawf wal-ju'a. Al-khawf wal-ju'a. So he turns security and safety into fear. A person now is fearful. He's fearful for his life. There's no safety in the, in the society, in the country. And there's no sustenance, there's no risk. And so when we look at all of these countries today where we see these groups are operating, Ikhwan al-Muslimin, Hizb al-Tahreer, and we look at these nations, these countries, we see them, we see amongst them, we see in, in those countries, we see tombs and graves and righteous people who are worshipped, like in Egypt for example. We see in Egypt, the shirk, that the rawafid, the batiniyya, which they introduced into Egypt in the 4th century, it never left Egypt. We see there are tombs of Badawi, Hussein, Zainab, and other than them. People travel in the millions to these graves, and they seek barakah, and they seek cure from diseases, and they seek aid and assistance, and so on and so forth. So it's a rule, in Allah's creation, that where a people become ungrateful like this, then from them is removed al-aman, safety in the society is no longer found. And al-rizq, the sustenance of the people is removed. So when you look at these people who are complaining in these countries, that our rulers, there's no jobs, and they take all the money for themselves, and we are fearful for our lives, from the security forces and other than them. There is crime, there is this, there is this. And then they put all the blame towards upon whom? They blame it upon the rulers. Everything other than themselves. And so the point is that this sabil, this manhaj which we are upon, this way, this calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to be upon basira, upon basira. And that basira begins upon or begins and starts with the greatest foundation of our religion, which is the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, singling out Allah in His actions, that believing He is alone 
in creating and providing and owning and sustaining, giving life, taking life, and following on from that, that he alone therefore is worthy of worship, that he alone is worthy of being prostrated to, bowed to, called upon, feared, hoped in, loved, having reliance placed upon him, that he is unique and singled out in all of these affairs. And likewise, that he is unique in his names, in his attributes, in his actions. And when a Muslim, he understands all of these affairs, and he cultivates and nurtures himself upon this, then he sees the world in a certain way. Like Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah, he mentions in his book Al-Fawaid, he mentions that a, 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 an individual that when he acquires fiqh of the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he sees the creation and the dunya in a certain way, in a certain way. And he recognizes from those things he re- recognizes is that Allah deals with his creation in a certain way. He sees all of these rules of Allah in governing his creation. And for that reason, when we see these groups who depart from the way, the sabil, the path of the Messenger of Allah, then we know that their departure has in it mistakes in, 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 in the foundational issues of our religion. They have mistakes. The reason why they are upon this misguidance is because they have not cultivated and nurtured themselves, nor do they cultivate and nurture the people upon the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if they make a claim, even if they make you know, a, a token gesture towards the likes of these uh, important issues. So, al-thabat upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the advice and it's from the ways of the prophets. We see that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he advised his offspring. And likewise, Yaqub alayhi salam, he advised his offspring with having this thabat upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, as Allah mentions in the Quran, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَبَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبُ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ That Ibrahim advised by way of this, his offspring. And likewise, Yaqub, he said, O my offspring, O my children, indeed Allah has chosen for you the deen, the religion. So do not die except while you are muslimun, while you are submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this thabat is from the advice of the prophets and messengers. It is from the way and the greatest of qualities and attributes of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And for that reason, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah, and this is the first of his two statements, he described the qualities of those who are other than the people of the Sunnah. He said, For indeed you will find, إِنَّكَ تَجِدْ أَحْلَ الْكَلَامِ أكثر أكثر الناس انتقالا من قول إلى قول that indeed you will find the people of kalam the, the ahlul kalam that they are the greatest of people in moving from one statement to another statement meaning they will change an opinion they will have one opinion then they will move to another opinion and they will be absolutely certain of one viewpoint in one place and then in another, in another place they will be absolute certain of its complete opposite and its complete contradiction and in another place they will even make takfir of the one who holds that particular opinion. So they move in contradictions. And the Shaykh says, وَهَذَا دَلِيلُ عَدْمِ الْيَقِينَ This is an indication that these people do not have any yaqeen. They do not have any certainty. And so indicating that the absence of certainty, not having yaqeen, is the, is the cause of the, the, the shakiness of these people. And then he says, for indeed Iman is as Qaysar said when Abu Sufyan, when he asked Abu Sufyan about those people who became Muslim alongside the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He asked him the question, he said, do any of those people abandon their religion being unhappy with it after he enters into it? This is Qaysar asking Abu Sufyan. And so Abu Sufyan said, La. And so Qaysar said, Kadalik al Iman. He said, This is the reality of Iman. When it, when it mixes with the heart, truly mixes with the heart, then the person will never ever become angry or he will, he will never leave it. 
So this shows that a thabat is built upon yaqeen, upon certainty. And then he quotes the statement of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, <coughs> Rahimahullah, and others, مَنْ جَعَلَ دِينَهُ غَرْضًا لِلْخُصُومَاتِ أَكْثَرَ التَّنَقُّلِ That whoever made his religion to consist of much disputation and arguing and disputing with people, then he will be often, he will be changing. He will be, he will be constantly changing and moving, you know, changing his views, his opinions, his belief, his methodology, and so on and so forth. But as for Ahlul Sunnati wal Hadith, he continues, <coughs> it is not known from any single one of their scholars, and nor from even the general people amongst them, who ever, ever return back from his statement, from his belief. Rather, he says, بَلْ هُمْ أَعْذَمُ النَّاسِ صَبْرًا عَلَى ذَلِكِ Rather, they are the greatest of people having patience upon that. Even if they are put to trial by the variety of tri- types of tribulations, and they are put to, tri- put to trial by tribulations, and this is the way of the prophets, and their followers from the early ones, min al mutakaddimin such as the people of Al-Ukhdud, those whose story is mentioned in Surah Al-Burud, the people of the, of the ditch, and likewise other than them, or whether it be the salaf of this ummah from the sahaba, tabi'een, and other than them. So this, this is the way of the people of truth. <coughs> and then he says, rahimahullah, in another place, <coughs> he says, uh, that thabat and al-istikrar, wa bil jumlati fa thabat wa al-istikrar fi ahli al-hadithi wa sunnah, ad'af, أضعاف أضعاف ما هو عند أهل الكلام والفلسفة that indeed this uh, you know this thabat meaning this being firm and al-istiqrar meaning being settled upon the truth amongst the ahlul hadith was sunnah is multiple times multiple times multiple times that which is with the ahlul kalam and the people of philosophy and then he continues to say how the people of philosophy, they are the greatest in their confusion and their misguidance than the Ahlul Kalam. Because the, the people of philosophy are those who believe that the, race, that the universe is eternal, there is no creator, there is no resurrection. And so they speculate from their aql regarding these issues. So amongst themselves you find them that they are so... Uh, they have so much contradiction, so much confusion, so much variation between themselves about these issues that they are trying to speak of. And likewise, we find the same thing applies today when you look at today, the atheists, the philosophers, the scientists, the, Darwin, the, you know, the, the, the Darwinians, and all these people, you find that when, they, when you look into the reality of their sayings, you find them that they are so contradictory, and they don't have any certainty in, in the reality of what they claim to be, to be professing. So these people are the greatest in confusion. And Ibn Taymiyyah is referring here to the people like Ibn Sina and Al-Farabi. Then he says, then you find the Mutakallim. These are the Ahlul Kalam, the people of Kalam. Those who were debating with these philosophers. He says, likewise, you will see them confused likewise, even if they are closer to the truth, because they at least are taking something from revelation. They are taking something at least from the Kitab and the Sunnah. So even though they have confusion and misguidance, they are nevertheless less than that which is with the, the philosophers. Then he mentions how al Hussein al-Basri, he is from the Mu'tazila, that you will find him, that he will be more firm than the likes of Ibn Sina, who is a kafir, who is from the philosophers. So he's just giving this example. And then he says, this is despite the fact that every single one of them from the Ahlul Kalam, the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, the Ash'ariya, the Maturidiya, each of them likewise claims to be upon the truth, even though they are fighting against each other, and warring against each other, and claiming each one of them has the actual truth with them. And then he says, as for Ahlul Sunnati wal Hadith, he says, فَإِنَّهُمْ He says, أَعْذَمُ النَّاسِ إِتِّفَاقًا وَاعْتِلَافًا That indeed, the people of Sunnah and Hadith, they are the greatest of mankind in being united and being cordial. And he says, everyone who is closer to their way, then they are closer to unity 
and so on and so forth. So these are two statements from Ibn Taymiyyah. And the lesson that we want to take from these two statements is that the people of the Sunnah and Hadith, when they recognize the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them, that Allah has saved them from the misguidance of all of the various tawa'if, the various factions, then they hold on to this ni'mah. They are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ni'mah. They never abandon or leave the truth which they know, neither for desires, nor for wealth, nor for position, nor for status, nor for any, any of these things. And this leads us to, nicely, to the piece of advice by Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, hafzallahu ta'ala. He gave a short piece of advice to some Salafis in Palestine, and they put a question to him. And the question is, it's a long question, I'll just briefly summarize it. The question is, or I'll translate it, what are the most important ways and means which make a student of knowledge who is upon the manhaj of the Salaf that he should remain firm upon this manhaj? Alongside the knowledge that you, may Allah bless you, are from the most senior in terms of age, in terms of knowledge, so from your experience with all of the various students, or with those who have passed through this manhaj, we have found amongst them those who were firm, and those who deviated and went astray, and they did not remain upon what the Salaf of Salih were upon. So what are these, so tell us, what are these ways, important ways, which aid a student in being firm, in having thabat upon the Salafi manhaj, and which keep him upon the Salafi manhaj, despite all of the various tribulations. So what is your precious advice in light of your experience, your long experience from, you, from what you have seen? May Allah bless you. So the Shaykh Hafiz of Allah Ta'ala, he began first of all by saying, uh, after saying Bismillah min a'zam al-asbab, he said from the greatest of the ways and means is that a man he perceives that he is faqirun illallah. That he is in need, that he is uh, in need, in poverty, with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he is muhtaj, that he is in need of Allah. Fi kulli lahzatin min lahzat. In every single instance of the instances in his life, that he actually feels and perceives that he is faqir, that he is needy, destitute, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, as a result of this feeling, when he inculcates this feeling, and your ikhwan, you know that this type of feeling is only produced when a person, he, he understands tawheed, and he is nurtured upon tawheed, and in his heart, the names of Allah, and the attributes of Allah, and the actions of Allah, he, he is nurtured upon this, this knowledge. Right, he understands the tawheed of Allah. This type of feeling of, have, of of being needy of Allah is something that tawheed inculcates and produces, and for that reason, we understand from this, as in the earlier talk by our brother, that salafiyah is the path to rectification, because salafiyah is the only da'wah, the only way which truly and in reality invites the people to be nurtured and cultivated. Upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Upon the correct, sound, Islamic aqeedah. In the issue of Iman. In the issue of Al-Qadr. In the issue of the Sifat. Because this is what we call to. This is our beginning call. And so this is cultivating the people upon that. Which will lead them to feel, truly feel. That they are fuqara ilallah. That they are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this in turn is from the greatest of the asbab. The ways and means which keeps a person upon this ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is being guided to the way of the salaf. So he says that a man perceives that he is faqirun ilallah, muhtajun ilayhi fi kulli lahzatin min al lahzat. That he perceives he is in need of Allah, destitute towards Allah, in need of him in every single instance of the instances of his life. So therefore he calls upon Allah and asks him to make him firm. And he calls upon Allah with that which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he taught us. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. 
O turner of the hearts, establish and make firm my heart upon your deen. And so the Sahaba said, قَالُوا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ تُكْثِرْ مِنْ هَذَا الدُّعَاءِ أَتَخَافُ عَلَيْنَا O Messenger of Allah, you repeat this dua often. Are you fearful for us? Do you fear for us? And the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, نَعَمْ He said, yes. إِنَّ قُلُوبَ النَّاسِ بَيْنَ أُسْبُعَيْنِ مِنْ أَسَابِئِ اللَّهِ يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ He said, yes. Indeed, the hearts of mankind are between the two fingers of the fingers of Ar-Rahman. And he turns them whichever way he wills. So the Shaykh continues and says, So a servant, he perceives, he feels in himself. And he turns to Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. He does not become deceived by himself. He does not become deceived by himself. And the knowledge which he has. For indeed, to be deceived by knowledge, with the knowledge, and with the thaqaf, with this cultivation that a person has, he believes he is mature and cultured and experienced, has some knowledge, has some cultural experience, he says that this is something that will deceive him. And he says, and refuge is from Allah. And he will deviate away severely. And he says, this happened to many people. He says, this happened to many people. And amongst them, he gives an example of a man by the name of Abdullah al-Qasimi. Abdullah al-Qasimi was a man from Saudi Arabia. He was around the time of Sheikh uh, Abdul Rahman bin Nasr al-Sa'di rahimahullah and he was a Salafi Sheikh. And the Sheikh says about him, كَانَ عِنْدَهُ مِنَ الذَّكَاءِ وَالْعِلْمِ That he used to have such intelligence and knowledge that would, you know, that would confound a person's intellect. He says, وَلَكِنَّهُ كَانَ مَغْرُورًا مُعْجِبًا بِنَفْسِهِ, بنفسه That he, was de- he became deceived and he became amazed with himself. And he says, وَهَذَا الْقَسِيمِ قَدْ اِرْتَدَّ عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ This man eventually, he became an apostate. And refuge is from Allah. And he said, وَقَدْ كَانَ لَهُ مُؤَلَّفَاتِ أَكْثَرُ مِنْ إِبْنِ تَيْمِيَةِ That this man used to have works that were greater than the works, more than the works of Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. And he said, he used to have intelligence, strength, memorization, understanding. However, he said, you found that his deception, him being amazed, that it would manifest itself in some of his writings. You could see that this was a man who would be amazed with himself. So the point being here is, the Shaykh is saying, it is desirable for a Muslim that he turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he make him firm. And he take the ways and means from dua and other such things. Then he says also, reflecting upon the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these are from the ways and means by which a person remains upon sabbat likewise to have respect to respect those who came first wahtiram al-awail to respect those who came before us meaning our salaf and those scholars who came before and likewise to respect the scholars to have ihtiram for the ulama this is one of the greatest of the ways and means of remaining upon the Thabat. We are not like those people who begin to curse the scholars who do not agree with their opinions and their ways and start, start expelling them from the Sunnah and going further than that and claiming that they are close to Zandaka and the likes of these evil affairs, scholars who are known to have defended the Sunnah and called the people to Salafiya and refuted the various groups of misguidance and who are the cause of the guidance after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of thousands if not millions of people coming to Salafiyyah. We don't res- disrespect the likes of these ulama. We respect them and honor them. And this itself is having thabat upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the shaykh says there are other such similar things. May Allah bless you. These are from the ways and means of a thabat And the shaykh says that the believer is... يجب على المؤمن أن يكون صابرا زاهدا that he should be someone who is patient someone who is abstemious with respect to the things which come to him of tribulations and then the shaykh mentions فَإِنَّ فِتْنَةَ أُمَّتِي الْمَالِ quotes a hadith indeed the tribulation of my ummah is in relation to wealth 
And then the Shaykh moves on to one of the great tribulations which are present today, which is being deceived and misguided by way of wealth. And this wealth is one of the tools which is used by these jama'at of misguidance from the ikhwan, and likewise tabliq, and likewise tahrir, other than them, all of these jama'at, these jama'at which are siyasiyah, which are, which are founded upon politics, He's, the Shaykh says, he says, how many a Salafi youth have we known, who used to be upon the Salafi manhaj, and then evil companionship, and these devilish satanic organizations, they came, and they began to misguide them and deceive them by way of wealth, and position and status. Wealth and position and status. Ya Ikhwan, it is from our belief that kufr, disbelief, isn't just, isn't just one type. Disbelief is of many types. A person can consider the messenger of Allah Sallallahu to be a liar and therefore not believe in his message. However, a person can believe in the messenger of Allah and know that he has brought the truth, and still not believe in him. Rather he will deny the message, because either he does not want to lose his position, does not want to lose his wealth, or it is because of arrogance. So we understand from this that kufr is of many types. And just because a person knows the truth, does not mean that he is actually upon the truth, and acting upon the truth. In a like fashion, just because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his arsh and that he is described with attributes and that he decrees all of the decrees of the creation just because we believe in paradise and hellfire and all of the affairs of the, uh, affairs of the unseen and we believe in the lofty stages of the sahaba and we love them and so on and so forth and we acknowledge all of these affairs of belief that does not mean that we cannot be put to trial by other affairs while still believing in all of these things. Why? Because there are, there are tribulations of wealth and tribulations of status and position. And for that reason, ya ikhwan, when these groups of misguidance from the ikhwan and these jam'iyat, they come and they, they don't come and say to you, become a rafidi, become a shi'i, become a khariji, become, they don't come to you with this. They come to you and they say, Come, we will help you to, give, to make da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will set up for you an organization. We will send you books. We will connect you with speakers. We will, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. And so a person becomes deceived by way of this. And even though he might have good intentions, he might think, MashaAllah, we can do a da'wah like this. We can, call, we, can, we can call thousands of people by way of this musa'ada, by way of this help. But in reality, these people, they are just using this as a ways and means. These jama'at, they have something else. Their aim is to amass as many people as possible under their umbrella, which they then want to use for their own political objectives. And then they go to different communities and places where they find Salafis, and they deceive them by way of this wealth and status and position. For that reason, the Shaykh says here, that they come, he says, they, they come and they, they, they make a person to turn on his back. And the Shaykh mentions an ayah in the Quran, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ Do not incline to those people who are the wrongdoers, so that the fire touches you. So the Shaykh says, unfortunately, the Salafi youth, he goes, he turns to these people who are destroyers, and then he ends up not just harming himself, or deviating himself, rather he goes beyond that and becomes an enemy, a severe enemy upon the Salafi manhaj and its people. Meaning, a Salafi youth, he's misguided and, and, and deceived by these people. He takes wealth from them. He becomes deceived by them. And over the passing of time, not only does he deviate himself, but he in turn he becomes an enemy to those whom he used to be with. And the Shaykh says here, uh, he says, وَقَدْ عَرَفْنَا هَذَا فِي الْجَامِعَةِ الْإِسْلَامِيَةِ مِنْ شَبَابٍ تَرَبُّوا تَرَبَّوا عَلَىٰ أَيْدِينَا وَجَاءَتْهُمْ هَذِهِ الْإِغْرَاءَاتِ That we've, we've experienced this in the Islamic University in Medina of youths 
who were nurtured upon our hands, meaning they were nurtured upon the Salafiya. And then these deceptions came to them, and then they fled on their heels, or they turned on, on, on their heels, wal iyadu billah. And then the Shaykh advises, so be cautious, beware of the dunya. Beware of the dunya and its glitter. For indeed, <coughs> the one who seeks to be chast, Allah will make him chast. And the one who practices patience, Allah will make him patience. And the one who seeks to be self-sufficient, Allah will make him self-sufficient. Meaning, <coughs> that these are things that a Muslim, a Salafi has to practice. It's not, it's not enough. You have to seek to be chast. You have to practice patience to be patient. You have to seek to be free of need of other people. To be truly free of need. To be truly free of need. So the Shaykh then says, for these Ikhwani organizations and the Ra- Rafidi organizations, and then he mentions in Palestine that these people are with you in Palestine. He says that these people, he mentions the, the case of a man who became a Ja'fari. He turned into a Ja'fari, a Rafidi, on account of, of, of this money. And then the people look at him and think that he's a Mujahid raising the kalima, the, 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 the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas in reality he is a Rafidi Khabis. And this, is what it, this is what this wealth does to people. Then the Shia continues and mentions that the Rawafid are found amongst us in the Hijaz, whom Akhbasu min al Yahudi wa Nasara, that they are worse, they are more filthy and vile than the Yahud and the Nasara, and more severe in their enmity to Islam and the Muslimin. However, this man, the man that we mentioned earlier on, he became from these Rawafid, he became a Rafidi, and this is the influence of wealth. Influence of wealth. And then he continues and he says, he mentions more about the Rawafid, and then he comes to mention Egypt a bit later, and he says, Al-An, now in Egypt, we, Egypt, we have six million Rawafid. We didn't used to have this in, in Egypt before, this many Shia Rafida. But he says, what is the reason? The reason is because of this wealth. This wealth. And he mentions the Ikhwan al-Muslimin. The Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they are the ones who came, and they opened up the door for the Rafida. Before the Ikhwan, the Rafida were, were, were generally hated by all the Muslims. Then along came the Ikhwan al-Muslimin. And because of their siyasa, they began to open the doors. And as a result of this, and they began to raise the name of jihad, the, raise, the, 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 the name of raising the, the, helping the Muslimin, the name of aiding the orphans, and the, so on and so forth, using all these slogans and titles to call to their da'wah, to call to their tanzim, their organization. And so they opened the doors with the rawafid, and opened the doors with other than them. said, so all of this evil and this zulm, all of it has come from the way and from the direction of the Ikhwan al-Muslimin. So the point here the Shaykh is making is that, in fact he mentions the word here, that this is al-Ghazwul Fikri. This is an ideological attack that the Ikhwan bring to the Salafi ranks. He says, beware and take caution of this evil, filthy attack. For indeed, the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they have slogans, they have ways, they have means, they have methodologies by which they make this attack. And so the people become deceived by way of these means. And then the Shaykh mentions and he comes to an end and he comes to a close. He says, likewise in Saudi, we have people who are corrupted by way of mal, by way of wealth. And this is all from the ways of Ikhwan. They put plants. The Shaykh says, they put plants in the ranks of the Salafis, in the name of Salafiyah. And then they, those people who are plants, they take you away from the Salafi manhaj. So the Shaykh says, فَتَنَبَّهُ لِهَذِهِ الْمَقَايِدِ وَهَذِهِ الْأَسَالِيبِ So beware of these uh, tricks and plots, and from these ways and means, and finishes by saying, we ask Allah wa ta'ala to give success to us and you, that He gives us firmness upon the truth and guidance, and that He saves us from the tribulations, those which are apparent, and those which are hidden. Indeed, our Lord is the one who hears these supplications. So this is some advice from our Shaykh, Shaykh Rabi, Hafizullah ta'ala, and it is a great advice by which I advise myself and everybody else.